When the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, and his followers migrated in 622 AD from Mecca, where he was born, to the town of Yathrib, every single person of the Ansar or supporters came forth to welcome the Prophet, peace be upon him. The Prophet, peace be upon him, left his female camel to kneel where Allah wished. Where the female camel had knelt, the messenger, peace be upon him, built a mosque on that piece of land. So he built an area which was owned by two orphan youths, Sahel and Suhail, sons of Rafia bin Amru. He paid 10 dinars for the areas from the money of Abu Bakr as Siddiq. May Allah be pleased with him. The entire Muslim community, both the residents and those who had migrated from Mecca with the Prophet, peace be upon him, participated in the construction of the Prophet's mosque, which was simply an open courtyard, about 805 square meters, in an area surrounded by a wall made from bricks and tree trunks which soon became the social and economic center of the city and the Islamic State. The messenger, peace be upon him, abolished the name Yathrib and renamed it. The new name was al Medina Al-Munawwara, or City of the Prophet, peace be upon him. Throughout Islamic history, the second caliph, Omar ibn al-Khattab, may Allah be pleased with him, in 17 Hijri, corresponding to 638, increased the area by 1,100 square meters. And in 29 Hijri, corresponding to 650 Gregorian, the third caliph, Uthman ibn Affan, may Allah be pleased with him, increased it by 496 square meters. The Umayyad Caliph Al-Walid ibn Abdul Malik in 88 Hijri, corresponding to 706 Gregorian, ordered an extension of 2,379 square meters. And 73 years later, the Abbasid Caliph Al-Mahdi increased it by 2,450 square meters. The first dome, which finally became known as the Green Dome in the Prophet's Mosque, or the sacred chamber in which the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, is buried, and the first two caliphs, Abu Bakr and Omar, may Allah be pleased with them, was built by the Mamluk ruler, the Sultan al-Mansur Qalaun, in 678 Hijri, corresponding to 1279 Gregorian. For over seven centuries, no additional improvements were made until the Mamluk Sultan, Qaytibai, added another 120 square meters in 887 Hijri, corresponding to 1483 Gregorian. Another three centuries passed and in 1265 Hijri, corresponding to 1849 Gregorian, Ottoman Sultan Abdul Majid initiated another extension of 1,293 square meters. However, and the oldest parts of the mosque standing today reflect successive waves of Ottoman building work. Soon after the establishment of the modern kingdom of Saudi Arabia, 1932 by King Abdulaziz Al Saud, May Allah have mercy upon him. He issued a royal decree ordering the expansion of the Prophet's mosque, a plan implemented by his son, King Saud. May Allah have mercy upon him in 1369 Hijri, corresponding to 1950. 
This first Saudi expansion was the largest the mosque had ever seen, and not only doubled it in size, but also brought about changes in the city of Al Madin Al Munawwara itself. In 1393 Hijri, corresponding to 1973, King Faisal ibn Abdul Aziz, may Allah have mercy upon him, ordered the construction of awnings on the west side of the mosque as a temporary solution to protect visitors from the elements. <laughs> Late King Fahad ibn Abdul Aziz, may Allah have mercy upon him, laid the foundation stone in 1405 Hijri, corresponding to 1985 Gregorian, for what must be the greatest mosque expansion program in the history of Islam. The expansion project for the Prophet's Mosque involved new buildings on three sides of the existing structure and a vast courtyard surrounding it, paved with marble and inlaid with geometric Islamic designs. The reconstructed main gate leading into the mosque side, the new King Fahad entrance, is situated on the northern side and is topped with a profusion of domes and minarets on both sides. The project also has the building of six additional minarets, the most powerful visual sign of the mosque, each 105 meters long, crowned with a four-ton gold-plated crescent. The Prophet's mosque is now fully air-conditioned, The comfort of worshippers has been further enhanced, however, by an ingenious method of natural ventilation. A series of domes, 27 in number, have been installed. These domes can be opened or closed according to weather conditions. Elaborately carved stone friezes decorate the domes, and the plazas have been paved in decorative geometrically patterned marble tiles.
In the inner courtyard, 12 enormous mechanically operated Teflon umbrellas, six in each court of the mosque, have been developed by King Fahad's architects to protect from and withstand the high temperatures.